Okay. Right, Mr. Uh, people, people versus Lanto. Your Honor, James Kaczynski, um, I, I'm asking the court right now if I could withdraw on this matter. Uh, I don't think I, uh, I could adequately rep help Mr. Lanto in his legal arguments because I'm not familiar with, with the issues in it. And uh, I'm just asking the court if I can withdraw. And uh, Mr. Lanto, then um, I can uh, I can appoint a uh, a different uh, court appointed attorney. Well, I I just want to clarify and make sure I'm going to be able to speak for myself in 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 the court. I don't want anybody speaking for me. As a matter of fact, I mean that the. the all I really want is to be left alone. So that's uh, first and foremost. And then as far as an audio only recording, I was told that there is an objection to the audio only recording. And like, I'd like to know, I don't feel safe without a recording. So is there any, uh, any reasonable objection? Well, first off, you can't record in the courts of law. They're already, if you'd like a transcript, Everything is already being recorded by my, my, my court recorder. And I can assure you that there's no, the, 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 the recording device is on and it records and that's what she does. That's, she uh, records everything. So if you'd like a transcript of that after the proceedings, you're more than welcome well, to I've been, order a transcript, so. I've been told that before. And then when it comes to getting the transcripts, I still am waiting for the transcripts when I was told that in the past. So well, like I, I said, I don't, feel, I don't, I don't, I don't feel safe talking, without a report. I know that you're not talking about the 23rd District Court because I know if you've ordered a transcript from my court, um, those always come, those are always uh, forthcoming. I've never had to deny anybody a transcript. So well, um, if, if, if that happened to you in another court, then I suggest that you call the State Bar of Michigan and report that court because obviously they're not doing things correctly. Uh, but, well, yeah, uh, I, I have no desire to do that. All I want is to have fair and meaningful hearings. And well, I mean, first off, sure. I'd simply just like to be left alone. But other than well, that, I mean, well, to get fair. And I, get, I get that. But obviously, uh, you uh, had an interaction with somebody where they are alleging that um, today's date and time set for the arraignment. So I, I want to make sure that you understand any of the following. Um, the, uh, on the date and time in question, it is alleged that because first let me let me do the arraignment part because you, you you need to let I need to let you know what exactly you're being charged with. All right. So you, you say you want to be left alone, but they, they are claiming that there was an interaction. Now, first off, you do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You also have the right to an attorney if you can't afford one, one will be appointed to you by the court at public expense. Now it is alleged that on November the 17th of 2022, while in the city of Taylor, that you violated city ordinance 32-31, which is a, um, a charge commonly known as interfering with the uh, police authority. That is a misdemeanor punishable by 93 days in jail and or up to $500 in fines. So as to that charge, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Well, first, uh, can I just make a few clarifications. Well, first, uh, this, I'm, going to I'm going to caution you that anything you say can and will be used against you. So I as understand. To, as to guilty or not guilty, that's just the only question I'm asking right now. Well, in order to say guilty or, or not guilty. Or you, you, or, you can stand, or you can stand mute, which means I'm not saying anything, and then I will enter a plea of not guilty for you so that you don't have okay. to say anything that automatically goes to not guilty. So are you, well, you just pleading? Guilty, not guilty, or standing mute? Well, before I make a plea, you stated that I have the right to be informed of the cause and nature of the charges, correct? Right, which is what I just what is what I just uh, what, I, what I just told you. I just told you what the charge was. Okay, and you're stating that it's based on an interaction. So my guess is that you have no firsthand knowledge of anything that happened. Well, I'm not stating anything. All I'm telling you is what they what the what the people of the city of Taylor have charged you with. They have charged you with a violation of city ordinance 32-31. And that, that ordinance is commonly known as, by name, as interfering with police authority. I'm not, I'm not putting any allegations. I'm not say, stating any facts. I'm merely stating what has happened to get this case into my court. That's it. Well, 
you you sound awfully fair to this point. And I certainly appreciate that because, yeah, and just to be specific, it's not the people of the city of Taylor. It's David Jones. And then I don't know the name of the prosecutor. And I just want to make sure that the prosecutor is aware of, you know, uh, Section 241, Section 242, Title 18, deprivation of rights under color of law. I want to know if they're aware of that. Well, first off, that's a separate, what you're talking about is civil, is civil type cases. Well, it's also um, so, criminal. So what I'm saying is, in this matter, the matter that is before me, okay, is a misdemeanor matter where you are being, it is alleged that you violated an ordinance of the city of Taylor, the people of the city of Taylor, through their attorney have acted to bring a case against you. So the only right. thing and what I can do right now is ask you, are, you, are you pleading guilty, not guilty, or standing mute? Can I have the name of that prosecutor that's bringing the charges? Because I've had in another case where a prosecutor stated uh, at a three proceedings away from the arraignment, she stated that after reviewing the video- right. So, and sir, I'm going to take, listen, I'm going to take your response as being non-responsive. Which is well, I object to that. Being guilty or not guilty, so I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty for you. I object right. to that. I object to that. Okay, then, 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 are you guilty or not guilty, or standing well, mute? Those, those are the three things we got going on right now. Well, I Go first away. have to clarify. You, you did say that so I was presuming. I have to clarify anything, sir. I'm being very fair with you, and right now you're 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 basically splitting legal hairs. Right now, the only thing that I have jurisdiction over is doing a raiment. Nothing, well, more, still, nothing more can happen in this case until the arraignment happens. And the arraignment well, is whether or not you plead guilty or not guilty. And if you're unresponsive to that question, then I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty for you so that I can protect your constitutional rights because a lot of people don't know that they should. So that's why I, I enter a plea of not guilty for people who don't really know how to answer the question. So that way they're not getting, no, no one's going to be bamboozled or said that, well, you, but you said guilty and you didn't know what was going on. I don't want that to happen. I say that you're either going to plead guilty, not guilty. Or if someone is unresponsive to that question, then I automatically just enter a plea of not guilty for them so that they can preserve all of their rights to a trial and everything else without having been forced to be pleading guilty. So Fine. by you saying everything else, that's, that's all well and good, but it's not the time and place for it. See, this is the problem is there's a time and place for everything in the, in the matter of procedures of courts. And when you just start trying to jump the gun and go right from zero to, to 60, that's not how it works. You, there's, a, there's a step in process and everything has to go in that process. And the process today is, today is an arraignment. It's just an arraignment where I'm telling the individual who is alleged to be a defendant what the what the allegations are. And the allegation is the violated city ordinance. And that city ordinance is basically um, one commonly known as interfering with the police authority. So that's, that's it, it, and, and letting you know what the charge is and letting you, letting you know what the penalty for it is. And, and I've already okay. stated. So again, I'm going to ask you guilty or not guilty? Well, I certainly appreciate the explanation. It seemed like you were getting a little angry. I don't know. I mean, I'm, getting, is, I'm not getting angry, sir, but I have, but when I'm, but I'm literally stating that this isn't, this, no, nobody's trying to bamboozle you or anything like that. I don't know what happened in some other court and everything that you want to do, you can still do. I just need to know if, if you're feeling guilty or not guilty. And if you're well, not answering I, that question, if you're not answering that question, then I'll enter a plea of not guilty for you so that it preserves all of your constitutional rights and the case still moves forward. Right. You said we're, we're interested in preserving my constitutional rights, correct? That is correct. That is correct. And then, and then one and of those... So listen, what I'm saying is everything that you're saying can be used against you. If you think that you have a motion to dismiss, that's something that you can do, but that's when the case is already going to the next next stage, which is... Well, like I'm I said, I... I'm not guilty for you. Well, like I said, if, I would just prefer to be left alone and not have to come back at all. And I, then if we're not going to do that, then I definitely like to have fair and meaningful hearings. And my concern is we've got a police officer and we've got a prosecutor, both are state actors, and they're trying to bring charges against me. And I just want to know, because you are a judge and you are another state actor, am I going to get a fair and meaningful hearing here? And I'm telling you that I keep right here. Hang on one second. Right and on I'm... Top, and I, copy of my 
Sir, please. I have not cut you off at any point. Please don't just cut me off. This is a copy of my oath of office. So why do I keep it here? Because it constantly reminds me that what am I going to do? I am here to, I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this state, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office. So I take that very seriously. My son uh, serves in the Marines. He takes his, his duty to uphold the Constitution seriously. So if, you're, if you are implying that I am not going to uphold the Constitution or that I am going to take an oath and not be true to my oath, then I take offense to it. So if you, if, you say, if you sense any sort of anger, there's no anger. The only thing I'm telling you is that you are implying that I somehow am an oath breaker. And I am well, not. Well, I didn't. So, I, I didn't. That's, that's exactly what that's exactly. I swore an oath to the Constitution that I put my hand on the Bible and swore to. And I'm telling you, I don't break my oath. Okay, so would you now, agree that you're, that you're not going to get a fair hearing? That's my job is to make sure well, that, would... that, that fairness happens, that due process happens. And so, well, I do... I, so I'm asking you, just as a matter of course, because this is the, the stage that we're at, is, is, is an arraignment. Are you pleading guilty or not guilty? Well, you just or said, if you don't, or if you're not responding to that question, I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf, as you, and I'll find you standing mute to the question. Well, I object to anybody making a plea on my behalf, and I oh, just well, wanted. I'm not. I'm not making a plea. I'm just finding you. I'm just. I'm just entering. A, I'm just saying that you're not. That you are right now presumed not to be guilty because that's just your constitutional right to be presumed okay. not guilty. And then I'm that means that... your constitutional right. I'm not. I'm not entering a plea for you. I'm just. I'm just listing you as somebody who is right now not guilty because the okay. constitution says you are to be presumed not guilty until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So I'm not and entering then, a plea for you. I am just merely stating that this individual is to be treated as someone who is not guilty. Okay, and then, so if I'm presumed innocent, I'm presumed innocent of all the elements of the charge, correct? No, you are presumed innocent until proven guilty. And you haven't had right, a trial no. yet. That's your other constitutional right. So well, like yeah. The for trial, we just set this for a trial. Well, we just said that I'm presumed innocent until proven guilty. And then my question was, am I presumed innocent of all the elements of the charge? And I didn't get an answer to that because that's a yes or no. Well, first off, I don't, I don't, I don't need to answer questions, nor am I going to give legal advice because that would be more legal advice that you would talk about with your attorney. And when I'm wearing the robes, I can't give legal advice to either side. I'm more like a referee. I can throw a penalty flag. I can call a whistle for a violation of a rule that I see one side doing or the other side doing. But I can't coach either team. Well, I certainly so appreciate you being fair. Yeah, because so the answer so the answer to your question is I can't answer your question because that would then be giving you legal advice, and I'm not allowed to give either side legal advice. Okay, because in this in this particular case, there are crimes that occurred, but it, the crimes that occurred were the people that put their hands on somebody that had no desire to be uh, having somebody put their hands on them and then binding them and then uh, placing them in the back of a gang mobile and then taking them to a cage. That's the that's the victim in this case. And the victim, okay, if well, the victim is. If the victim is going to be the city of Taylor and it's going to be presided over by a judge that is paid by the city of Taylor with a police officer that's bringing the charges with the help of an attorney, and then they don't know what 241 or Section 241, Title 18 conspiracy to violate my rights, then I have serious concerns for the fairness and the meaningfulness of this of these proceedings. And I think okay, that's well, very I, reasonable. I am, a, I am a judge of the, of the 23rd District Court of the state of Michigan. It's located in the city of Taylor, but I, but I am not, I don't work for the city of Taylor. But do you see so, my, do you, do you see my concern a, for my safety? No, I, I absolutely, except for the fact is I'm presiding over the whole case and I'm going to make sure everybody has due process. Everybody has the, the same fairness to bring, bring the, uh, bring their case and uh, to make sure that they can cross examine witnesses and make sure everything is reported by my, my, my recorder who also has sworn an oath and I find her who have never have broken her oath either. And so I'm just telling you, I'm gonna be doing my job. My job is to defend the constitution and I will be doing so. So as of today, it was a set for, it was set for arraignment. I have entered, a, I have entered uh, the uh, not guilty uh, as, to your, as to the charges against you. 
And right now I can do one of two things. One, I can set this up for a pretrial. The pretrial is, is, a, is something that I always afford the parties where they can talk to one another. If they want to work something out, I have no problem with the constitutional right to enter into contracts and to do things like that. Or I can just set up for a uh, jury trial or bench trial right now. If you want to forego any of that and say, look, I really have nothing to discuss with them. I'll just take, I'll just like to go to trial. So would you like to meet with the prosecutor? Well, in which case I will set this up for a settlement conference date where the two of you can discuss the matter. Or I can just set this for a jury trial or bench trial right now. Well, I mean, I, I, I do have a couple of objections to that because I'm being labeled and, and called the defendant here. And what I'd like to be called is the victim. And what I'd like to do is if oh, this is listen. a fair, if this is a fair listen. proceeding, then that, that prosecutor, as long as we're going around and throwing out suspe uh, suspicions and alleging crimes, I'm going to allege them of the crime of uh, uh, the Department of Justice, Section 241, 242, Title 18, which is deprivation of rights under color of law. And I take serious okay. issue with people uh, uh, acting like criminals. Okay, so what I'm saying is this. One, I don't have jurisdiction to take your case. Two, you're citing to federal law. Three, you would have to file that in the federal court. And, you know, and all of those things are available to you. You have the right to, to do so and have the court, the proper court, determine that. All right. So um, what I'm saying is this is a city ordinance and I have I have jurisdiction over state cases and over city cases, misdemeanors. And I don't have and what you're saying, what you're saying, I don't have the jurisdiction to hear. That doesn't mean that you can't bring that case in the proper court. All I'm saying is from now on, I'm just going to refer to you as Mr. Lanto. Uh, if you prefer not to be referred to as the defendant, then I'll, I'll refer to you as Mr. Lanto. The prosecutor is Mr. Dave Greco and I'll refer to him as Mr. Greco. And that way, okay. everyone will just uh, refer to one another in their generally names. But what yeah, I'm well, asking right now is, would you like me to set this for a settlement conference at a later date, or would you like to set this for a bench or jury trial? Well, I'm willing. I'm willing to forego any uh, any intention of uh, criminal charges against the prosecutor if they're willing to just dismiss this now and leave okay, me so, alone. So, well, here's the thing: is is I'm going to give everybody the opportunity to look at the case and think about it, and not have to, not have to. I, I, I made sure that you didn't have to take a guilty plea right off the cuff without having to think about it. So, I'll set this. I would advise. I'll set I this would advise. And everyone can come back at that settlement conference. And if there's, okay. no if there's a resolution then, then there's a resolution. If there's not a resolution, then I'll set it for, I'll ask if you want a bench trial or jury trial, because that's your constitutional right. And I just need to know which one you're choosing. So, all right. Outstanding, outstanding because I'd like to talk to this uh, prosecutor who I suspect is a criminal at this time. And I would like well, to. Uh, uh, first off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to caution you, Mr. Lanto. I'm going to caution you and I'm going to caution you once. And the next time it happens, I will hold you in contempt because I will hold anybody in contempt. I do not run a Jerry Springer show. I do not run a Jerry Springer show where the litigants are going to use words and things and call each other names. If you're going to refer, I'm not referring to you as an offendant. I rightfully could. Anybody who has charges brought against them is for a moment known as a defendant. If you look at a dictionary and look up defendant, that's what it says. But you prefer not to be called a defendant, and I and I acknowledge that. And I'm going to call you Mr. Lanto. You are oh, not. Sure. Thank you. Every, you are not, and I repeat, not until you are proven. Until you prove otherwise in a court of law beyond a reasonable doubt, you are not to call any other litigant a criminal. Sure, sure. And, uh, and well, well, I've been I've so, been alleged to be a so criminal. While, so while so while we will make I will make sure that the proper respect is is given to you. I'm going to ask the same of you. So you will refer to Mr. Greco as either Mr. Greco or as the prosecutor, but you're not going to call any other litigant or any other witness or anybody else a criminal unless they actually have a criminal record or they have been proven to be a criminal in a court of law by, by a jury of their peers. Okay. Yeah, and for the record, I called him a suspected criminal. Well, I'm very, I, care I'm very uh, careful with my words. In again, court. again. You're, you're splitting hairs, and I'm just telling you right now, I'm giving you one heads up, and I don't know about any kind of Jerry, Jerry, Jerry type Jerry Springer stuff, where there's going to be finger pointing, chair throwing, and name calling. Everybody well, I did do, I, I did do a cop right. watch karaoke, which is okay, probably well, what right. led up, which is probably All what right, led so, up. 
All right, so I'm going to set this for a settlement conference. All of your contact information is correct, so we I can make sure the due process is afforded under the Constitution, and I'm getting I'm mailing uh, notices out to the proper uh, spot, and that's the Cloverdale address. Uh, no, and at this time I don't feel safe giving an address, but I'll give you a phone number or an email address that I can be contacted by because I do want to participate in the settlement conference. Well, right, but I also need to. I'm, I'm required by law to mail it out to your last known address. So if, if this address is something that you will still receive, all I'm saying is I already have an address. I don't yeah, know in, in, it's still current. Is it still in the act in the no, in the activism that I do, it's it's important to stay on the move because I have people that try to retaliate against me and do violent things to me. So I prefer right, not well, to then that's, that's up to you. That's up to you to go to the uh, it is incumbent upon you to go to the post office and make sure that they have your forwarding address. I'm going to mail, my clerk is going to mail it out to the Cloverdale address. And if you didn't put a forwarding on there, well, that's, that's between you and the uh, post office. Uh, we, well, don't send out emails. we don't send out emails um, as notice, but, and we don't make phone calls about, uh, to let people know when the notice is. We use the mail system because that's the only thing that's tangible and can actually be proven. Why? Because you can see that you put something in the mail, you can actually see that it's been in the mail because it's posted. So, yeah, is it going to be certified? Because that's the only way really to prove that somebody got it. No, it's not. And we don't have to start it by certified mail under the court rule. And the court rule has already been ruled to be part of the Constitution. And it's already been uh, ruled as being constitutionally proper under due process of the Constitution. So I'm going to mail it to your last known address. If you have some sort of change of address, that's between you and the uh, Postal Service. All right. So we're going to set oh, yeah, this for a it, conference date. It'll be uh, sometime in the uh, in the new year, sometime in January, and we'll see everybody then. Okay, I certainly appreciate you being fair. That's that's what I swore to do. That's what I always do. Have a good day. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Gazicki, if I didn't make a ruling on your re on your request, it is granted. So now I have um, Idoni. 